Hi everyone, this is Terry. Today's video is a continuation of our lessons in embroidery on the Luminaire. This will be somewhat project-based, so it's going to take some of the things that you've learned already and then add a few new things to it. So what we're going to look at is what is a process for monogramming? For instance, monogramming something like your linens for your table. Well, what I like to do is I, I have marked more or less the center of the hoop, and actually I didn't use that drawing a line. I normally would, but I marked an X more or less here, and that is going to be where my design would be placed on my linen. Now, I have a tea towel here, but I can use that because it more or less represents what you would have if you had a, a linen napkin, for instance. You want to usually put it in the V of a corner. And if you're going to do that, you sometimes don't want to hoop it because these can be fairly thick seams. So what I do is I mark a similar X for where my design's going to be. I look at the overall measurements because this design is going to be five inches by 4.80 inches. And what I do is I cut out a little paper template, I mark the center of it, and then I have the center on, on my project, and I line it up with that same center on, on the hoop. And then I take some spray basing, and I'll put all of that together, and I'll, I'll line up this corner as well and I'll tack it down using the spray basting. Now, obviously this is a towel, but you get the general idea of what I'm doing. We're going to not look at the, the linen itself. We're going to look at how to create the design and how to get it in the correct position. So let's go back to the beginning and I'll just choose delete to delete this overall design and we'll recreate it. But before we do that, I want to mention down here in the bottom, I did not tell you that what this always press when moving, removing your embroidery unit key is. This moves your embroidery unit to the farthest side so you can transport it. So you can see now it's all the way over to the left. And you can also use that if you wanted to have some space when you're working on top of your embroidery border unit to get something in position. As soon as you go in, you select embroidery, it's going to move back in place to be ready for embroidery. The first thing we're going to do is go into category one, go to category 13, and design number 23, and let's select that design and choose set. Now what I'm going to do, I have a five by seven hoop that I'm using. I'm just going to move this down. And right now I'm not too worried about whether it's centered or not, because we'll adjust that in a moment. And I'm going to go to 200% and I'll go to edit. And now what I'll do is use the move function to move this over. So now I have it positioned correctly. And we looked at this in a previous lesson. We can go back to 100% and we'll choose OK and go to Add. And now let's go get the design that I want to use. And actually, I chose the wrong category. I want to be in Category 3. And I've already looked at a couple of these letters and I've decided the right one would be the smaller M that I have down here. So I'll choose Set. Now this design needs to move up, so I'll just move it up a little bit and get it into position. And then I'll just go to 200%. And again, I'll go to edit, I'll go to move. And I'm looking at this little point right here. That's going to be my reference for what I feel should be the center of that design. And I'll move it over and look at it. Uh, we may move it up just a little bit and that looks pretty good, and we'll choose OK. So now is a good time to group everything together because we have it in position. And by the way, I left room at the bottom of this hoop because I plan to have a basting box. So we'll group it together by selecting the group key. You see it's all grouped, we'll choose OK. 
Now, if it happens to get moved, it's easier to move a unit than it is individual parts. But because we grouped it, now all of these keys are grayed out and I want to recolor this. So I'll go in and select it, select the part, portion of the, the design I want to recolor. And I'm going to make that M, this dark gray. Now the rest of it I can live with as far as colors because I think it looks nice together and I'll choose okay. So now we're ready more or less to embroidery. And so let's choose embroidery. And this takes us to the layout screen. Now the layout screen is the last stop, so to speak, so you can embroider a design. You see all your colors here. You see how long it takes for each color to stitch out and you see the order. But we do want to add a basting box and we'll go to layout and choose the basting box. The parameter for that basting box as far as distance away from the design is in the settings pages. If you go to your embroidery settings page and you go to the embroidery basting distance right here, you'll see that this is the setting. Now, if you wanted to look at this in millimeters, you can do that and you can see it's five millimeters away. If you want it to be closer, now's the time to change that and you will have to add another basting box. You'd have to remove this one because it remembers that setting that I already had. So I want you to understand that and I'll explain it more in future videos. You also can move designs in this screen and we will use that but I also want to show you the plus minus key. If you have a thread break, this is where you can cycle through each of the colors in a design and you can see it either moving up or moving down. So you're going forwards or backwards in that design. You can also move in increments of plus one, minus one, plus 10, plus 100, plus 1,000 or minus 1,000. And to get to the beginning, you can choose zero. Usually when I have a thread break, I back up a few stitches and I will start again. We now have the reinforcement capability on our machine. If you have update 2.0 and that reinforcement stitch is nice to tie off those stitches. So, I'm ready to just move back to the previous screen. I'm ready to work on my design, but I want to line it up. It's telling me to attach a frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to pretend to line it up and pretend I have my fabric lined up here and I have this plus key. There are other ways you can use your machine, like use a snowman or whatever, but honestly, this works extremely well. So it's going to move the carriage and what we're going to do is select this key and now what we're going to do is get a laser light on our the bed of our embroidery unit and let's look at that I'll zoom you in and now I can move that now we'll go back so you can see it on the screen so you understand what I'm doing to move this into position and the color for that is selected in one of your settings. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to move and I'm going to use this arrow key to move that position. Now I'm going to turn you back so you can watch what I'm doing. I'll zoom you back in and I'm using those arrow keys in the move to move this up. And you can see that I need to also move it over to the right some and I more or less have it in position. Now, if it needs to be rotated, I can do that as well. So let's come back. Let me adjust the camera a little bit. And we'll choose okay. Let's go to rotate. And let's pretend this needs to move a fraction of a degree, like a 10th of a degree to the left. I can do that and move this in fractional units. And what is happening is my design is shifting 
and we'll look at the overall pointer and you can see where it is on the, the overall design. So you can see that's fairly well lined up. Now I might need to move it over just a little bit to the right and you can see now that it's moved in position and it looks like it's square on. So now I would be ready for embroidering this design and if you look at it in the hoop, you're going to see that it is turned a little bit in the hoop. It's not entirely straight because I did not mark it straight on my stabilizer or on my fabric. The first thing that's going to stitch out in this design is going to be that basting thread. And that basting thread, we'll go back to the thread colors, is black. The next color is gray. I typically load up the gray color and I stitch that first stitch in order to stitch out my design. It'll take me about 10 minutes looking at the top of the screen to stitch out the overall design and I've made my first gift on my machine. I'm Terry Maffitt. I hope this video is helpful to you. Join me in my Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. Please subscribe to my videos and watch them in their entirety. Make sure you watch them in order because these lessons are specifically designed to show you all the things you need to know in order to be successful with your machine. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.